Hi, this is Rich with Rich Bound Photography, Sacramento, California, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Tips and Tricks for Real Estate Photography, a place where we talk about all things real estate photography related. And uh, I just want to thank everybody for uh, checking out this channel, and uh, what a great year 2021. It's starting out a little better than last year. No, last year started out pretty good. Anyway, I want to tell you, today we're going to be going through an edit that a lot of people ask me to do a video on because it's something that I think everybody has challenges with and that's super large, large spaces. And uh, I know why for one, uh, I bring all my equipment, all my lights. I, when, I've, when you see the room, it's going to be big and you're just going to go, oh my gosh, how do you do that? But it's really just a few tips and tricks and, and a few good solid uh, uh, techniques for real estate photography. Uh, now we're going to be doing flambient show you how I'm doing that and how I edit it and what I'm looking for in this big room and how to light it and how to get get out there with uh, <laughs> with a little bit left of your day. So uh, sit back and enjoy the video. I want to thank Adorama as always for sponsoring all my videos. If you're going to go buy something, go check out Adorama. Uh, got great service, great prices, great uh, turnaround. And uh, you know, if you have any issues, you can always contact them. So use my affiliate link in the show notes and I appreciate it because it helps me get motivated to make these free videos. I also want to say I'm doing private coaching now. So if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is a great opportunity um, to learn and go through my techniques like I'm, I have on my YouTube channel, but you can get a little more in-depth uh, time, just send me a message at rich at richbaum.com and uh, I'll return your email and in the subject line just put in coaching inquiry or something like that so I know what you're talking about. So sit back and let's go in the Lightroom Classic. This is not the CC version, Lightroom Classic and uh, I'm going to show you how I do it, okay? Okay, now we're in Lightroom Classic, and remember I use Classic, so if your screen looks different than mine, you're probably using the CC version of Lightroom, and I'm using the uh, CC version of Photoshop also. So, this is the big shot, and it's a big room. Let me just uh, make it a full screen so you can really see it better. Oh, my full screen is not working. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. I like it the way it is here. So we've got a really big challenging space. Luckily, we have white ceilings here, although they're vaulted, but we have a lot of issues with uh, reflections and everything. And I'll show you how I did this, but I'm pretty happy with the outcome of this shot. And I got nice, nice views. So I exposed for the view out the window. So let's just go into my flash shot. So right here, uh, no, I'm going to use this flash shot, I think. Wait, let me look here. No, I'm going to use this flash shot. Good. Okay, so I have a 400 camera right. You can't see it, but you can see the spill from the light. <clears throat> and again, I'm using a lot of light for this room. It's a big space. I'm using a 600 to the left, and I'm using a 300 behind this wall. And you can see the spill there. So we have some really good parts here. We have some not so good parts here. We have some issues with chandelier um, reflections. We have some, uh, sh I mean, shadows. We have shadows here. Um, we have we have to take care of these hot spots there, there, and there. But overall, we're pretty good. So um, I have just let me go into the development of it. I'll just go back to the totally straight out of camera, and you can see my special sauce. I like. And my settings are 1 1 25th. So I needed a quite a bit of uh, shutter speed uh, because um, I, I had to really, um, I had to brighten up this space. Okay. So um, I had to uh, raise my shutter speed so I could get a good exposure out the window. Okay. So I'm now at 16 millimeters F8 and ISO 500, and I always say, push your ISO up to 500 if you need extra power from your flashes, okay? So I'm just gonna give my special bump, my full bump special sauce for my A7 III, there we go. And that really helped out the image right there. Now I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit, and that's pretty good. So I've got a lot of great things here, got some issues. So let's do our ambient shot now. I'm going to go here. And this is straight out of camera. 
And as you can see, it's a, not a great looking shot, but I know from experience the parts I'm going to use. I don't worry about this bloom here because I'll be using that um, with this shot. So it's a combination. You know, we're doing a composite. So I'm going to go here and I'm now going to, um, I'm going to do my full bump here. And I'm just going to take out some of the shadows, make it lower. I'm going to try and help this white balance wise and make it a little cooler. Okay. Now I'm going to take out my blue saturation globally because I want to get rid of all that blue color cast. And a lot of people say, well, why don't you just use luminosity masking? And it's because I tend to have problems sometimes, especially with blown out areas using luminosity masking. In theory, luminosity masking in Photoshop is the greatest thing in the world, but it doesn't work that way all the time for me. So it's just easier for me to prep this image to fit into my flash image, okay? Now I'm gonna go to my local brush right here in Lightroom, and I'm gonna do my 60% saturation brush. I'm 60% negative saturation. So I'm taking out almost all the saturation from my adjustment brush. I'm adding a little bit of whites here, and I call this my little new special sauce for clearing up the orange cast from ceilings. And I'm gonna primarily be using my um, ambient shot for um, the ceiling. So I've got to get it some, somewhere that I can really use it. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Now, for this area down here, I am going to do one little thing. I'm going to do a new, new adjustment brush, and I'm going to use dehaze. Okay, where's dehaze? Right there. Now, use dehaze sparingly, but on this one, I just want to try and control some of this here. So you can see it's made it a little better. I think it's better and it will help. Ultimately, it will help the uh, overall image. So I'm just, I don't think I'm going to use much of this ambient right here, but in case I do, it's going to look a lot better. Okay. And then we can bring it in there too. I'm just giving a little bit of sharpness to help with the, all this bloom. But again, I'm not going to really be using much bloom here. Okay. So I've got, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got my ambient shot where I want it, and I've got my flash shot where I want it. There we go. So let's just go back and forth and just check it one more time. And I'm looking at my ceiling, and I've got a pretty good ceiling there I can use. I'm looking at that area back here where this light is, and I can fix that with the ambient shot. So let's go there, and let's just bring these both. I'm going to bring them into Photoshop as layers. Let's go into Photo edit in open as layers in photoshop and while you're waiting to have it open up in photoshop i just want to say thanks again for for um subscribing to my youtube channel using that affiliate link all those things coaching podcasts we've got some exciting things going on so i hope you'll join us on all the things that we're doing okay so it's going to take a minute the first image i open up in photoshop usually, usually takes me a little longer so now the first thing we're going to do the flash image is on top and those of you that are new to layering it's just like the layer mask is going to be the flash image is going to go over the ambient image and when we paint when we reveal we're revealing the ambience from underneath so i'm going to um, go in here and highlight both of these images and i'm going to go into edit auto align layers okay and i'm going to go okay and you got to auto align your layers because we're doing a composite and as you can see there's a little bit of a border right here white border that's because it's a little bit and i've got a really good tripod as i always say but it's just a little bit out of alignment so i'm going to click on the upper layer which is my ambient layer and on top of it i'm going to make a layer mask so I'm going to go down here to where this little camera is. I think it's the camera. Um, add a layer mask. And I'm going to hold down on a Mac option, Alt on a PC. As I click that, and there we go. It's uh, ready to go. So anything I paint in, now I want to make sure my settings are white. I'm going to hit the letter X. And I want the, the, mask, to be, the mask to be white. I have a paintbrush. And as always, I'm at zero hardness. And I'm up here at 100% uh, opacity and 20% flow. You can, if you're starting out, you might want to go down to 10% flow. But I say that all the time, so you probably heard, heard that many times. Okay, so now let's just start painting in 
in revealing the ambient layer below. And let's just start with this shadow right here. How fast and easy is that, huh? Let's go up here, get rid of all those shadows. So basically I'm bringing in the ambient, okay? And because I prepped the ambient, it's going to fit in there, okay? Let's go in here and just, okay, now I'm gonna move in a little bit closer because this is more uh, detailed work, okay? And I'm gonna make my um, brush a little smaller. There we go, I'm just masking out Masking in the ambient, masking out all those uh, ceiling fan shadows and not ceiling fan, uh, chandelier shadows, okay? And let's go down to here. I'm just going to run this right over here. And you can see I'm knocking out some of that good um, candle power right there. But I'm okay with it. I don't mind. And let's go in here. I'm just bringing in ambient. And again, I, I, I always tell people I could do this whole image in about 10 minutes. So it's not really that hard or it doesn't take that long, but it takes a while to get there, okay? So this is how you deal with ceiling fan shadows, all kinds of things you, you can't deal with in, <laughs> in what we do. So the ambient is what you let do the heavy lifting and it's really, as always, the ambient's doing a great job. Now I'm gonna bring in a little bit of um, ambient in here to lighten up the, uh, underneath the deck right there, the uh, roof there. So I'm bringing that up a little bit, okay? Now here, I could actually bring it up a little bit here. Now I'm doing this all freehand, so you could easily select the area with a polygonal tool like right here and, uh, you know, put in certain areas, but that just takes extra long and I do it freehand. Let's just get rid of that. Okay, so, whoops. Okay, so that looks really good. Now let's go over to another issue we have. Actually, right now, though, I'm going to hit X. Um, I'm going to erase a little bit of what I did. Go back to the paintbrush. Now I've got a black mask, so I'm going backwards here. But let's see how... Let's just erase some of that. I'm bringing back these candles. Okay, there we go. Bringing back the candles. So I'm erasing the ambient I brought in there because I like the flash better. So I dealt with the specific uh, issues of shadows, um, and then I come back and I, I erase the areas I need. So I wanna make it nice and sharp, so that looks a lot better. Let's just look at the difference here. Okay, it's a little bit hazy from the ambient shot, but I'm okay with that there, okay? Now, let's go into, bring it closer here, Deal with this spot right here. Okay, I'm making a nice big paintbrush. Oh, I gotta go back to, I've gone to black, so I gotta go hit X, and I've gotta go back to reveal again. And now I'm taking out that hot spot in the ceiling. There we go. Okay, so I've gotten rid of most of the issues, um, and it looks pretty good right now. But one thing I'm going to do now, I just want to bring in a little ambient to add a little life to this image. Okay, so I'm just going to make my brush. I want to give a little bit of shadows here because I lit from camera. And in theory, the light should all be coming from this direction at me. So I want to bring back a little bit of shadows. So let's just bring that back. And you can see that brought a lot of dimension back there. A little bit of ambient there. Actually, I'm going to take out that last image, that last sweep. I don't want to take out, and I don't want the ambient on the wood because the ambient on the wood wouldn't look as good as the flash does, okay? So I'm going here a little bit there. Now I'm gonna add in a little bit of ambient in this cabinets. Just take off some of the, the flashiness, okay? Okay, let's go here. I'm gonna make a bigger brush. A Little bit of ambient on this wood is gonna be okay there. Okay, let's go here. Now let's bring maybe a little bit down there and a little bit here. Okay, now let's go closer and you could do more work or less work, whatever you, works for you and your schedule. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of ambient to give some life to this couch. It's just bringing in the logical shadows, you know, bring it in there, oops. Let's go in here. 
Sorry, I went, I got out of Photoshop. Okay, here we go. Let's put in a little bit of ambient on this back of this couch. And you may not like the ambient there. You might just like to keep it all flashy. So and I'm going to take out, this is really interesting too, right here. I've got glare here from the lights, but I want to replace it with natural glare from the um, ambient. On Look on the left side of this couch. I like that. I, I don't mind it at all. Okay. And when you put it all together, you're not going to really notice a lot of the things that you might be looking at now that bother you. But there we go. Okay. Now, let me bring it back. I'm going to hit Command SW. I'm pretty happy with this. So I want to do a few other things in Lightroom to uh, help this because it's a little bit hazy up here from the ambient, I think. So let me go Command SW. And we're bringing it back into Lightroom. It takes just a second. Okay. And here's that shot. So now what I want to do is go into my adjustment brush and I want to make a new uh, dehaze. Uh, actually, I had it already there. And let's see what the dehaze does up here. Does it help? And this is where you just play around and massage your image to make it look as good as you can. Now, so you know what? I think it's going to actually do the trick. And I'm going to try a few more things. So basically, I've done my mask. And also, if you hold down Command, it, it turns on auto mask. So it kind of stays within the lines. That's something I've been doing recently. So let's just go here. And I think I, I like it better. I do. I think I've done a, done a splendid job here. OK, let's go here. Just get some of that, get it a little more crisp. Now, let's try another thing, too. So I've got that all selected. You can put your cursor on it. You can see what I've selected. So that's the mask in Lightroom. Um, and what I want to do now is I want to just do a little bit of contrast and a little bit of clarity. And there we go. We sharpened it up a lot from uh, where we had it a minute ago. OK, so let's just... Um, Let's just back out of this. And I'm going to actually take down the orange. It's a little too orange for me, the whole picture with uh, all the orange areas. So I'm just going to go down here into my HSL slider, which is hue, saturation, and luminosity slider. And I'm just going to take my saturation and take my orange and take out a little bit of saturation there. I think I like it better. You can see here it was where I had it. Look at the in front of the couch. I'm just going to take out about 20% uh, of that orange. And now I'm going to um, add a little bit of sharpening. I don't really teach sharpening much. But I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe a little bit more of contrast and a little bit of texture. There we go. So let's see how that looks. So one other thing, I'm going to crop out. When we did the auto align, I have a little bit of a, a border there. So I just need to crop in a teeny little bit. OK, that's something to remember. OK, and there you go. Let's look at it here. I think it looks great. And you can see those beams now. I got a lot of better, um, a lot better sharpness to them. You're doing that little bit of dehaze uh, adjustment brush. And, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty happy with this. And you can see it didn't take that long. I could actually have masked back some of the flash in there. But don't worry about it. I think it's fine. But anyway, I hope that uh, shows you that one. I'm going to do one more quick one. Another shot from this same set. So let's edit this image while we still have a few minutes. And I'll show you this. Again, was a pretty tricky shot. Um, and I have a 1 uh, 150th of a shot for my flash image. Let's go find the flash image I'm going to use. Take this out. I'm using this flash image. OK, and let me tell you how I did it. Let's just go back right to reset. I have a light. Uh, that I think I had a speed light or a 200 on a stand around this corner to illuminate this area here. 
I have a uh, 300 to the camera right, but you can't see it. I have my 400 here, and you can see my, my stand right here. And um, I might have had a 600 behind camera. So I had a lot of light here. And, uh, you know, you could probably do this with less light, but um, I, I didn't mind. When I come to do a house like this with a huge, big room and stuff, I bring out all my lights because I don't like to uh, worry too much about it. So let's just start with the, um, the flash shot. And I'm going to do my full bump here. There we go. And I like that a lot. And you can see the issues we have, but we're going to just do it like the other one we did. Okay. Now I'm going to go in to use my ambient image. Here's the ambient. Let's go look at this straight out of camera. So I've just got a uh, one quarter of a second and I'm at F8, uh, 22 millimeters, ISO 500. So again, the uh, flash one is uh, 500 ISO, 1 50th of a second. Okay, so let's go to the ambient image, and I'm just going to do my thing called my ambient yellow out. There we go. And uh, I like this the way it is. And you can see my histogram is a bell cur curve kind of here, so it's in the ballpark. And I think it's going to work with all the areas I need. But one thing I'm going to do is go back and use that ambient yellow out. I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, saturation brush. 60% negative saturation and a little bit of white added there. Okay, so now let's just uh, go in here and let's start erasing some of this yellow cast up here because I want to use the ceiling. Okay, I can actually go up in there. Okay, and you may say, oh, it looks terrible what you're doing, but trust me, it won't look that way. Let's get uh, rid of this orange color cast here. Okay, and I can actually add in a little more white give it a little better color. Okay, I'm gonna now take out some of this yellow here. And that is really a uh, answer to so many uh, issues are to try and uh, take that yellow out and prep. It's so easy and so fast. And you can do totally hand hold this. And I'm just going to go here and get out that yellow. Okay, and I'm taking down this yellow a little bit. Now, I'm, you see that there's an X on my brush, I'm gonna hold down option and it's a negative. So I'm gonna paint back a little bit of yellow here because this was yellow, but more like a tan. And I'm gonna bring back a little bit of color into this wood right here. So it's gonna match what it is in reality. So there you go. And that looks really good. Okay, so I've got my flash shot and my ambient shot. And I'm going to now bring them into Photoshop as layers. I hope that makes sense though. Prepping the ambient shot is really the key because the ambient shot is there to assist you by, by dealing with uh, taking out, masking out shadows, reflections, all kinds of things. It's super important. And I want you to check out my video, Let the Ambient Do the Heavy Lifting, uh, the revised re the revision of it, okay? So here we are with both images open now. Okay, and I'm going to highlight both images and go over to Edit In. I'm going to Auto Align Layers and go into OK. Okay, so now I'm just going to click my ambient image and make a layer mask by holding down Option on a Mac, Alt on a PC, add a layer mask. And it's a black mask. And everything here is ready set up as I need all my settings. So let's just go to town and try and um, get rid of some of these issues. So let's just mask in the ambient here. There we go. Now let's get rid of that shadow right there. And you can see my colors are not perfect, but they're not bad. Okay. And I'm just going to mask in a little bit ambient in here, bring in a little light in that back room. I'm going to avoid the window at the door because I want this, I really want to, um, have a little bit of a exposure for the view out the window although that is not much there a little bit there let's now let's take out it take care of that hot spot in the kitchen work on the kitchen ceiling get a little bit of ambient in there a little bit there a little bit there and again it's so simple this letting the ambient come in now I'm going to go make my brush about the size of that door and I'm going to hold down command which turns on oh no that's an that's an Lightroom, never mind. 
So I'm just going to make it small enough and mask in a little bit. Remember, we're only at 20% flow, so you got to do a few passes. But anything more than 20% would just be too much and too fast. Let's go back here, a little ambient there. And let's bring in a little ambient love on this couch. I took out some of the glare there. There we go. Now let's go here. And the couch is really a little yellow in this shot, so I don't mind masking in a little more ambient because it takes off some of that orange curse right there. Looks better. There we go. And by George, I think I've done a little ambient here. Okay. Now let's go back in um, and let's do what we did on the other lights up here. I'm going to go work on this. I'm going to hit X and make my mask black. So I'm going to hide this. Let's just get that sharpness in there to bring back the uh, beautiful light bulbs. And you may think, oh my God, nobody ever going to see that. But you know what? It makes a difference. So I think I probably exposed for these light bulbs. And here's another tip. If you wanted to, you could... Um, just copy a light bulb here and put a light bulb here. So you're you're changing a light bulb. I have a video for that uh, that I did a few years ago. So you can check that out. Now, one thing, I'm going to go back to white brush, white mask, and then I'm going to realize I forgot this shadow right here. So I'm going to make this go here, mask in the ambient. And there's the shadows gone. And you know what? I don't. You, you would have never noticed that shadow, but we all try to do the best we can. So let's just go around and examine it. Looks pretty good. Um, let me see here. I'm going to go hit X and paint back this light here. There we go. I got a little bit of ambient on that. Let's see what ambient looks like here. Oh, I took out the ambient there. But I don't like taking out... I'm going to go back to brushing an ambient right here. I don't like the color of that. Okay, so let me bring back a little bit of ambient right here, maybe. There we go. Bringing back shadows. Maybe a little bit right here. And this is a pretty big photo shoot, so I don't mind doing this extra work. And I'm going to erase and go back in here and see if I can erase and make it better. Nope, I don't think I used any ambient over that. So that looks good. That looks good. Uh, oh, let's go in here and erase. Let me see if I got any ambient there. Oh, yeah. So I'm bringing it back to the to the flash shot because I, I painted over a little bit of ambient over these light bulbs and they're making it better. OK, there we go. And by George, I think I'm I think I've done it. OK, now let's just do one more thing. Hold on. Let me um, go back up into this beam. See if I can bring back a little bit of the flash. There we go. I'm erasing the ambient that I brought in because my mask is black. Okay, and let's go back to white. And I'm just going to paint in a little ceiling here because I think I've got a little bit hot from the flash. There we go. Yeah. Now, again, I could have done this image in about a minute and a half. Oh, one other thing we've got to do. I'm going to mask in ambient here. Or wait, let me see. Do I have... You know what? I'm going to see if my ambient shot didn't have that light stand there. I'm not sure if it did. Nope, the light stand was there with the ambient. So I was going to say if the ambient shot didn't have the light stand there, I could just mask it back. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit Command E to flatten this image. And I'm going to just go down here to my spot healing tool, my spot healing brush tool. And I'm just going to take out I could also do it in, in Lightroom, but Lightroom clone tool doesn't work nearly as well as Photoshop. So this is just that adjust. That is just the, the brush right there. And look, it just completely took it out. OK, so let's just look at what we did here. Let's look. Oh, I already flattened it. So I'm sure you'll see then that this is, is a, a deliverable image. And it really wasn't that hard. I'm going to hit Command, uh, Shift, Command. Uh, e to flatten. Oh, I've already done that. I'm going to do Command SW to bring it back into Lightroom to just do a few more things. 
And I think you'll agree, it's it's really fast and easy. And don't be worried about this stuff. If you've got the, the knowledge on the techniques, uh, you're good to go. So I'm just going to crop out that little border from the auto align layers. Just bring it in on these two sides. And then I'm going to add a little bit of texture, clarity, maybe a little contrast. And there you go. I pretty happy with it. Well, thanks a lot for joining me. I hope that video explains some things. Leave a comment. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, you know, what works for me may not work for you as always. You know, it's just what, what uh, seems to work best for each photographer. But I was able to get in and out of this uh, at, a, at a reasonable amount of time. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the outcome and the clients like the outcome too. So again, thank you Adorama for sponsoring my YouTube channel. Uh, if you're going to use that affiliate link, it sure it makes my day. Also want to say hi given the coaching, one-on-one uh, -on -one private coaching. So send me a message at rich at richbaum.com if you're interested. I'll send you more information. And also, uh, you can get all the presets on our, on our, uh, our Shooting Spaces podcast uh, website and that's shootingspaces.net and it's under uh, I think it's under purchase or, or tools just or you can search for uh, presets and uh, we've got webinars coming up we've got all kinds of stuff happening so check it out we also have the podcast shootingspacespodcast.com so thanks a lot and go out there and shoot better shoot smarter shoot faster make more money and go have more fun with go buy some equipment go uh go buy take your wife out to dinner or your uh, husband and uh do something fun with the kids so anyway it's a great opportunity great career and uh, if i can help you that makes my day see you on the next tutorial bye